I'ma let this shit go for a minute cause It's just too beautiful It's got me feeling like I'm on top of the world just Looking at everything Thinking about everything so after today, the Galaxy Sled right here will be no more. Unfortunately, I'm going to be parting it out and selling everything in order to put money down on the new 850 that is coming out for 2019. Now the question comes up as to why I'm parting it out versus just selling it as a whole. Well, since the new 850 came out, uh, prices for the 16, 17, and 18 accesses have uh, gone down quite a bit, unfortunately. You can get uh, a snow check, or sorry, you can get a leftover 18 for under 10,000 now. And a lot of the uh, used sleds that are going on like Craigslist and uh, Facebook and everything are going for under 9,000. So mine would probably sell anywhere between six to 9,500 or something like that. So I figure I can get a little bit more selling each individual part, including all the OEM parts off of it, rather than just as a whole. So I've already sold a few parts, so we need to get those taken off and get those shipped out. So that's what we're gonna do today. Last Instagram story ever all together. Sad day. If I didn't owe anything on it, I would definitely keep it and have it as a backup spare sled, but since I do have a loan out on it from uh, two years ago, I still owe a little bit on it, so I'd rather just pay that loan off and be able to get uh, the 850 and only have one loan for uh, the 850. This sled has definitely taught me a lot in the two years that I've had it. I've definitely grown as a backcountry rider. Uh, I've been all over Washington, I've been to Idaho, been up to Canada a lot with it, up to Whistler, up to Revelstoke, Valemont, everything. And I will be honest, I'm not that big of a jumper or anything like that I never really hit the big huge drops or big huge jumps like a lot of my friends I was more the guy behind the camera taking pictures and taking video of the guys hitting those jumps so a couple pieces of advice that I would give to anyone wanting to build a sled similar to this or turbo their sled or basically just build a mod sled or something like that the couple things that I would probably start with would have to be uh, handlebars like controls and stuff like that better suspension doing like exit or Fox shocks or something better than uh, the stock shock and then as far as the performance side I would get uh, a full pipe definitely do the full uh, Y pipe tuned pipe as well as a can now as far as suspension you'll definitely want to go with like exit or Fox shocks or something along those lines something that's gonna be better than the stock uh, mono shock if you do get the Walker Evans shocks they are pretty good I had those on a 2013 uh, Pro RMK and they were pretty good, but once I stepped up to these exit shocks, they were quite a bit better. Next year, I probably will go with a Fox shock just to see uh, what the difference is between the exit and the Fox shocks. But really the best way to know what suspension is best for you, I would, I would say just find a friend that has the aftermarket shocks and just try it out, see how you like it, and then go from there. Like if someone has the exit shocks or the Fox shocks, I know there's Raptor, and then I believe there's at least one or two others that may shocks for the access platform. I think definitely the most asked question about my sled is definitely the wrap and where I got it from and who designed it and everything. It was Arctic Effects right here. They're actually one of my sponsors. They completely designed it from a couple pictures that I sent them of Galaxy Max truck. I don't know if anyone saw that. I'll put that up on the screen here. But that's essentially where I got the idea from and I sent them a couple other pictures to let them know like what I wanted, but you can kind of see all the different uh, features that was in the wrap, the little bit of bandana type, and all the galaxy theme essentially, and all along the tunnel. I thought that was really, really awesome. I love this wrap so much. I really don't want to part out the sled, but unfortunately I have to. Now when it comes to steering and controls, I went with the Cheetah Factory Racing handlebars as well as an RSI throttle block and RSI momentary kill switch. Uh, now the reason being for the momentary kill switch versus the stock one, this one you have to hold it down to actually get the motor to stop running rather than just a button that you press and it clicks down uh, like the stock one. With my thicker gloves on, I found uh, it was a little bit tougher to press down so I uh, basically just moved over to uh, using the key to uh, shut it off, but it does make it pretty nice sometimes to just have that right next to uh, where my hand is to uh, shut it off. Now I really loved these Cheetah Factory Racing Bars. I don't think I'll ever have another sled with 
without a set of these. They just give you a lot more area. You can see it's almost double my hand width right here and it just gives a lot more area for your hand to go on the handlebar. The one other thing that I would definitely say you should do is get a aftermarket rear bumper. Get one that's a one piece design similar to uh, the mountain armor right here. All right, now let's get to the fun, maybe not so fun part of taking the whole set apart. <laughs> I think first thing we'll do though is change jackets because I really don't want to get this 509 coat dirty. Yep, that works. All right, just to give you guys a quick update. We haven't continued day one. It's actually day three of this. Reason being, I wanted to kind of focus on getting parts taken off and getting things shipped out. So in between that last clip and now, I've been basically, that's all I've been doing the past two days, essentially. So this is what the sled looks like at the moment. It is definitely a painful thing to look at. This, oh, I really, really love this sled, but uh, unfortunately it needed to be done. Track is off, skid is out, all the suspension is out. Uh, secondaries off. I gotta take the primary off here soon. I have a few things left to do, but still getting parts off, still getting stuff sold, still getting a lot of stuff shipped out. But uh, she's getting there. A couple quick things I wanted to address. I had a few people hit me up on Instagram asking why I was uh, parting it out and what my thoughts were on actually parting out a sled, whether it's worth it to do it that way or to sell it as a whole. And in my opinion, it is worth it if you have the time and the patience to actually do it, to actually do it and see it through. Reason being, it takes a lot of time to one, break down all of the parts from the sled, as well as posting all the different parts on uh, say Facebook or on a online forum or Craigslist or something. Basically what I did is I went through and just listed out all the parts, went online, saw what each part was going for, used and new, and kind of just formed my own uh, price from there. Now, as far as like shipping, I would definitely recommend uh, going to like Walmart or something like that and getting a bunch of those padded envelopes as well as uh, a lot of their boxes, like the small, medium, and uh, even large boxes. A couple of the items I did have to like make my own box. I just took a medium-sized Walmart box and just formed it around the bumper and put the handlebars and the A-arms inside of that essentially. Obviously the bumper is a little too big to fit in most boxes and uh, the proper size larger box really isn't gonna work out because you're gonna have a ton of space. And plus that one is going to Canada, so it's quite a bit to ship to Canada. So you wanna keep it as small and as light as possible, when, especially when you're shipping internationally. Now one thing that I'm doing that, that you don't necessarily have to do, but I would recommend, and it's just being a good person kind of, is just cleaning up the parts when you get them taken off. I've seen in the past and had experiences with people not just generally cleaning up parts when I buy used parts or something like that. And it's not very often that I buy used parts. Just wiping anything down, cleaning it up, getting all the dirt and oil and everything off of each of the parts, it really helps out with just being a good seller, essentially. I don't know how to really explain that. Now, one of the other questions I got was, how are you boxing up all the parts that you haven't sold yet and such? Uh, basically, I just went to Walmart again and, and got a bunch of just the plastic bins that go for, I think, between four and six dollars each which I can use now to put to store parts in and then later I can use for anything else really. It really helps to just keep things kind of a little bit more organized rather than just strewn out across the garage. Now yes, everything is a mess at the moment as you can tell, but once I get everything off the sled, then I'll get it a little bit more taken care of and organized. One other thing I would say is definitely get a couple things of bubble wrap in this form. I think it was $5 or so. I don't think it was very much, but I got uh, the thinner, the smaller bubble stuff here and then I got a roll of the larger stuff to really wrap parts in so they stay protected while you're yeah. Him. Should I go or should I stay here? The daily thoughts. Trying to make it to Vegas, see famous lady parts. That's the shit they call raunchy and I just made it art. I'm trying to rock the Givenchy and get the latest scarf. Well, I'm just online, feeling I'm a wish list. Scrolling through Instagram, fantasizing life with this bitch. Well, I don't mean no offend, but they say that's the term. I'll probably end up in. I didn't realize the camera battery died, so hopefully it saved all that. But basically, we got it more torn down. We got the overstructure off, the exhaust valves out, harness out, coolant bottle out, and then have other few just various things here and there. Uh, motor is just about ready to come out. All right, now let's get the motor taken out and see if I forgot anything. Yep, I definitely forgot something. So the upper rear engine mount, it looks like is what I forgot, if that's what it's called. Well, that was a little unorthodox, but it worked. And I'll be putting everything into these verses. Cause when I get the chance, bitch, I'm gonna pop and meet the lady in my dreams on the way to the top. I swear I feel it coming soon. I'll be praying nightly until then it's 
yo, I don't say it lightly Cause I'm the one on the team that never got picked People looking at me every day like I am not shit I swear it's nonsense, so I just stack my dollars Until the bitches fucking hire Shaq and Magic Offense But I don't feel like I'ma ever make it some days Like waking up for work, hungover, throwing up on Monday I pull my All right, so I've got the motor close to where I want it I just need to take off the primary It's a little tough with just the uh, one adjustable wrench that I have to turn the clutch puller tool So I just need a little bit more leverage for that I still need to take off the basket and magneto right there Everything else is pretty much off that I wanted to take off. I think I am gonna cut it right there for day three I am very tired. It is past my bedtime. So we'll see you tomorrow. All right day four We're pretty much done Got most everything cleaned up a little bit organized for the most part not perfect, but uh, at least it's all kind of just off to the side so we can have a little bit more space in the garage now. now as far as the motor goes, I left the spark plugs in it. I wasn't able to get the uh, stator flywheel and basket off at the moment, but I'll get that off later. Uh, I did tape up all of the openings where the fuel injectors go in, where all the different coolant hoses connect, as well as the intake and exhaust side. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Yeah, right there. I actually still need to empty a little bit more gas in the tank here. I only had a five gallon tank to put all of it into right there, so I need to go grab uh, one of my other ones from the storage unit. Also got the whole garage just kind of swept up, cleaned up, because it was pretty bad for a couple days there. One thing I would definitely recommend is getting a bottle of this. It's literally just called Awesome. You can get it at most of the Dollar Tree uh, dollar stores. You can get it in this bottle or the refill bottles like that. I typically just get one of these and then probably five to 10 uh, of the other bottles and then just use it over time. It works really well for these degreasing and cleaning jobs like this. All right, that's where I'm gonna end today's video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you do have any questions, let me know as well and I'll try my best to answer them. With that said, if you have not already, please consider subscribing. And if you are already subscribed, make sure to hit that little bell to turn notifications on so that you get notified when I do upload a video. So I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time. Thanks.